Welcome back to episode number 14 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist link in the description. And let's get started. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to combine the Flask server and the GPIOs together in one application so that you can create a web interface to control the hardware components you have connected to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure you have watched the previous tutorial because we are going to start directly from there. Let's now add a new URL to this web application. So now let's say that I want to do slash something. So if I do slash, of course, this is the main slash, the main root. Now let's say I want to check the push. I want to make a new URL for push button. So for this, of course, you have a 404 not found uh, result, okay? Because this URL simply doesn't exist within this application. So we are going to create a root for that URL. And the functionality here we are going to do is simply to print whether the button, the push button is pressed or not pressed. So we are going to link here the web application with Flask with the GPIO functionality. And as you will see, this is not really difficult to do. So here, the formula is kind of always the same at app.root and then I will provide the root and the root will be push button. So don't use paces uh, if you want to make multiple words okay in a root. The best way to do it is to use dash okay dashes everywhere. Let's name that function push button so this time with an underscore. The name of the function doesn't really matter, okay? It doesn't need to be the same as the URL. It can be anything. Just make something that is meaningful. So actually, instead of push button, we could do check push button date. And let's just return an empty string for now. I'm going also to remove the port. So we keep the basic, the default port. Okay, so now let's just run that web server i'm going back to here uh, i have to put 5000 and it works okay so we don't have anything on the screen because the string is empty okay but it works we have the 200 result here okay if you have a url where you have nothing here you have the 404 result okay now we have a root and we can get access to it from the web browser. So let's make something with that. So I'm going now to initialize the GPIOs. Okay, so import rpi.gpio as GPIO. I will, so I can set up GPIOs before or after this. This doesn't matter here. I'm going to do it here gpio.set mode with gpio.bcm so we use the gpio numbers and then gpio.setup and i'm going to create a variable here button pin which is 26 on the hardware setup that we have so button pin gpio in great so the button is initialized and now i'm going to do if gpio.input with the button pin if it is equal to gpio.high which means that the button is pressed i'm going to add one indentation here and return button is pressed now if the button is uh, not pressed i'm going to return button is not pressed and note that here i could do that else okay if the state of the button is gpio high we we'll return that else we we'll return that but you can see that the else here is not mandatory because why is that because when we do return then we just return and we exit the function so everything after that will not be executed so if the button is pressed we directly return that and if we go to line 18 it means that the condition here was false 
So basically, when you just want to check something and return, then you don't need the else, okay? Because the else is kind of implied here. So if button is pressed, we return from line 17 with that text. If not, then we go to line 18 and we return that text. Now let's run that and let's go here and let's refresh. Button is not pressed. So now I'm going to push the button, keep it uh, pressed, okay? And I'm going to refresh and you can see button is pressed. I refresh, now I release the button and button is not pressed. So great, now you have an application that can tell you the state of your GPIOs and you can run actually that application in any computer connected to the same network as your Raspberry Pi, okay, even your phone. You can just go to that URL from your phone. It should be of course connected to the same network again, but you can get any information from your GPIOs from any device in your network. All right, that's the end of this episode. If you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.